The Riddle of the Earth, Chapter 9 The Effect of Gravity on a Disintegrating Body The circumstances, therefore, relating to comets which appear within the solar system have been passed in review how they are attracted, whether by the outer planets or whether by the sun. The fact remains that they are projected into our system. They seem to follow certain periodic laws, such as the Halley system of every 76 years, although the attempt to identify a class of Windley with one individual comet has led to much misconception. The shorter so-called periodic comets, although each is but an individual in a group, also point to definite laws whereby they are introduced. Yet these laws are sufficiently elastic, inasmuch as sometimes a comet does not return at the period it is due, and sometimes more than one comet appears in company. An explanation of these orbits shows that no comet can possibly possess an orbit except an apparent and temporary one, because the body itself is losing weight at every instant and cannot thereby sustain any regular orbit. The fact that a comet approaching perihelion very considerably accelerates its pace so that we have the astounding instance of a comet swinging round half the circumference of its orbit within three hours is proof positive that to describe such action as an orbit is absurd and that we witness in comets phenomena entirely removed from the ordinary action of stable celestial bodies. In like manner to their eccentricity in the form of orbit, so is their speed, for it is commonly noted that a comet after its phenomenal rush to perihelion afterwards slows down, shows pronounced sluggishness and appears to become moribund. This must assuredly be due to the pull of gravity, with the result, though not always or scarcely ever observed because for a time the nucleus and the tail show no signs of activity, that the body again begins a fresh sinuous movement towards the sun. It is highly probable that the comet of 1887 was the return of the comet of 1880, which we, when we have the comet of 1882 with several filmy debris, that of 1889 with four attendants, and Brooks' Comet of 1893 also with four attendants, which, which suddenly shot into activity like a fiery torch soon after perihelion. Can we not in all likelihood perceive the process of one comet in all its various stages inexorably drawn into the magnetic attraction of solar radiation? The flight is checked by the action of gravity and the comet fulfills its allotted task. After one, two, three or more shortened periods, the residue joining one or other of the meteor streams and being swept into the fiery embrace of our great luminary in due time.